Hash maps are an insanely useful tool during technical interviews due to their performance and ease of use. Often you'll be asked to implement one from scratch to test your knowledge of building up a data structure from smaller ones. Let's see how we can do this today. This is Algo Daily. So, so far in our adventures solving technical interview problems, we've mostly used arrays as helpful data structures to store things and to retrieve them. And we really like arrays because they're amazing for looking things up really fast. So they allow for all of one time, constant time lookups. And this is because all of the elements in an array are usually stored in contiguous blocks. So right next to each other in memory, which makes them really fast. But there's gonna be times where we can't or don't want to use indices as the way to look something up. In programming, we often want to use regular keys to store and look things up by. A key could be any kind of string, and using keys enables us to look things up by a string. And this is super convenient when we have to store values belonging to a specific property. It gives us a better reference to retrieve things by than arbitrary numbers. So today we're going to try to implement the hash map class from scratch, and we're just going to focus on two methods, a get method and a set method. And so if you look at this diagram in front of us, we have a visualization of how hash maps work. So each of these keys is attached to a value. And when we call set, let's say these are identification numbers for these people, these individuals on the left. If I call set Jess and 303222 as the two parameters, I should be able to set a value for Jess of 303.2222. So later, when I call get Jess, ideally the class object would return this exact value to me. I want to make a note now that this is very similar to how JavaScript objects work beneath the hood and many dictionaries in languages like Python. What we're implementing is a more primitive version of that where we don't necessarily care where we don't necessarily care about the order of the keys and all we care about is being able to set and get values. So just to confirm, we're going to implement two methods, a get that will take in a string and return the value and a set that will take in the key and the value and set this and make all of this possible. This is a good time to talk about the theory of how general hash tables and hash maps work. So as noted, we have keys that correspond to values, but the way we store these values is pretty interesting. Similar to how arrays store values at certain indices, hash maps have what are called buckets beneath the hood. Each bucket contains a number of values and each bucket is accessed by a certain hash. The corresponding analogy would be an array's indices that correspond to values, but the hash map is a little more sophisticated than that. To access each of these buckets, we'll need to convert the given key string to a bucket number. And this is where the hash map gets its name. We typically use what's called a hashing function to take a key string, and it's usually a string, and convert it into 309 or 283 or 231. Each of these numbers provides us with a location for the values that correspond to it. A lot of times, actually, hash maps are implemented with arrays under the hood. Each of these could be an index number that corresponds to 
the value at that location. And using keys decouples us from having to know where the data is in the array. But given a key, after it's been converted into a proper bucket index, we can just map it to an array beneath the hood and get the value at that index. So real quick, a word on collisions. Collisions are when a hash function returns the same index for more than one key. We won't cover it in this video, but there's a few different ways to handle collisions. In a very primitive implementation like the one we're about to do, where we use arrays beneath the hood, there's not a whole lot of ways to solve for it, but you can use alternate data structures to solve for it, like linked lists and trees. As we mentioned before, the hashing function just takes in the key and returns to you a bucket index. In our case, it's a bucket index, but it could be a different type of location depending on the data structure that you're working with to store the actual values. If it were a linked list, it might be a pointer to a node, and if it were a tree, it might be the same. Hash string is a function. What it does is it takes an input string, and for each character in the input string, it'll grab the character code. So the character code is an integer between 0 and 65,535 that represents the UTF-16 code unit at the given index for a character. So what we get back is just a number. And we add the number, the character code, for each element in the, in the input key to a final hash, and we get a number back that corresponds to our bucket index. In other words, we're translating the key from a string into a somewhat randomized number. But the important thing to note is that a good hashing function should be consistent regardless of when you call it. A bad hashing function would take the same input key and give you two different values that would be confusing to know where the actual values are stored. And then for our hash map class, all we want to be able to do is initialize a new object with the hash map class, call set on it, and then call get. Let's look at the complete class now. Within the constructor, we initialize a private instance variable called this dot underscore storage, and we initialize it with an array. So the array will be the secret weapon under the hood that is doing the actual storing of the values. We have the hash string method. That's going to be our hashing function. We've already covered that. And the interesting parts are these set and get methods. So to set a key and a value, we calculate an index using the hashing function. So we pass the hashing function the key, and we get an index back. Then we check if the index exists within our internal storage array yet. If it does not, then we initialize and set ourselves up with an array to store multiple values in the event of a collision. And then, and then we push an array of the key and value as pairs at that location. Then on the flip side, to retrieve a value, we pass in the key to get. Get will then use the same hashing function to compute the proper bucket index. If nothing is found at that bucket index in our internal storage array, we return undefined. But if we do have something there, then we'll loop through the array at that spot and look for the key that corresponds to the one we're trying to get and return that value. 